point that uh, Josephine made before I go very quickly into this and that is about all of us being co-authors. Not all of us are co-authors unfortunately. One of the, the uh, 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 behaviours of the PAP over these last 51 years has been to silence, bankrupt, jail or exile many of the people, loyal, decent, honest Singaporeans who wanted to contribute to Singapore. And we know for example uh, these trumped up charges about Marxist conspiracies and all the history has shown us to be untrue. So we'll make that point first. But in relation to the SDP I want to to say the first thing that we need to do and the first thing that we have proposed in our shadow budget which unfortunately the media hasn't covered very well I encourage you to look on our website for it uh, is to uh, turn our uh, public services into uh, uh, non-profit services so do not make money from the housing of people do not make money from the feeding of people do not make money from the educating and the keeping people uh, healthy and also uh, the cost of government which has to be reduced significantly. Three, four million dollars a year is obscene by anybody's measure when you have people who are earning four dollars an hour. We also call for the zero rating of GST for lower goods. It's not true that only 40% of people pay for GD, uh, G, uh, GST. Everybody pays for GST because it's applied to um, uh, oil, it's applied to um, your writing materials, it's applied to everything that you use on a daily basis. We also advocate very strongly a Singaporean's first policy and the quarters does not uh, achieve it. We know very clearly, because I work in that sector, that uh, employers uh, find ways around it. Even the levy is also not something that is um, uh, a able to manage this. Minimum wage as well and the small and medium sector industry. Let's ground our economy. I agree completely with Tarman. Let's ground our economy for the Singaporean people for the future. Vincent of SDP, thank you very much. You. Nina, your turn to speak for SPP. Well, the, there are now. some issues that the SPP would like to bring up, I think, uh, and as regards to education. I believe education is very important for, for Singaporeans. And I, I think that the government could, should and be able to build more universities to encourage learning. And uh, I believe in uh, long-term learning, lifelong learning, sorry. Um, and also, the, I believe that we should create awareness in youth. I think that uh, to teach them about the law and governance of politics. That is that the, the government should uh, encourage schools to hold talks, you know, and symposiums to the youth to uh, give them a platform for critical thinking. And maybe one day they might, you know, go into politics or whatever they want. And I believe that in, uh, as, as regards to health hospitals, I think that uh, we should have built more hospital beds. I think there's not enough hospital beds because medical tourism took out a lot of uh, our you know, uh, beds and uh, hospital spaces. And I think that and also the um, rise in medical costs also contributes to that part because of medical tourism. And I think that uh, uh, we should also allow a conducive environment to, for our Singaporeans to think. You know, that is when we grumble, we, we do everything, we don't know. When we grumble, we are not happy. When we say things that is not right, I think the government should have a more listening ear. I, I, I believe they do, but I think they should do more, you know. And uh, also that, uh, and also I believe in uh, taking care of the aged and also the marginalised citizens like caregivers, single mothers, which they have uh, not, uh, they are not very happy about that because they don't fall in the normal society. Nina, thank you very much. You. Your two minutes, unfortunately, are up. So now we have Gerald Giam of the Workers' Party and your two minutes start now. Well, the Workers' Party believes that one of the greatest long-term challenges that Singapore faces goes beyond just the economy or society. One of the biggest challenges we face is a lack of political checks and balances in parliament. We feel that there's a lack of alternative political leadership in government. Now, the government currently is dominated by just one party, the PAP. If this party were to fail, what would happen to Singapore? Alternative governments do not just spring up overnight. And that's why the Workers' Party has a great emphasis on, on putting forward a rational, respectable and responsible party that we that we'll, will be able to win the trust of Singaporeans. Now, if we feel, even if we feel candidates that have all the uh, capabilities and the credibility that Singaporeans want, but they do not win elections, we're not going to make very much progress in that respect. 
And that's why we need a sizable number of elected MPs in Parliament to be able to safeguard Singapore's future that way. And so I hope that more Singaporeans will step forward, will join us in this exciting journey, this very important journey, to be able to safeguard Singapore's future and secure a, a more uh, uh, a happy future for Singapore. Well, actually, we have one more minute. You sure you want to stop there? Okay. Well, Minister, um, your turn now to round up. You two have okay. only two right. minutes. Thank you. Well, first, to respond on the specifics, uh, Mrs Chum mentioned uh, the lack of hospital beds. In fact, our hospitals uh, currently have only 85% utilisation of beds. In other words, there are significant spare beds available in our hospitals at any point in time. It's not true we have a shortage. On GST, I think um, Mr Vijay Singer misunderstood the point. Uh, I did not say that only 40% of Singaporeans pay GST. How could I? Uh, what I said is that the bulk of our GST is paid for by the top 40% of Singaporeans and foreigners. In fact, foreigners pay a lot of the GST. That's exactly why we should continue to have the GST at a low rate, 7%, covering a broad base, but with the bulk of the money coming from the rich so that we can help to subsidise and benefit the poor. It's a fair system. It's a fair system of tax. We can deal with the immediate problems. Cost of living is an issue, and we are providing most Singaporeans middle income and low income with significantly more benefits this year than the increase in their cost of living. Don't worry about it you're getting significantly more benefits than the increase in your cost of living. This next few years is going to be as trying as what we've experienced in the last three to four years. We've got the problems in Japan. We've got the problems in the Middle East. No one can say how it's going to go. But we've got to be prepared for surprises and more ups and downs. We need a team in government that's proven, experienced, knows how to deal with crisis, and always with a sense of fairness. And we need new leadership, the people who will eventually succeed the Prime Minister and his current team. That's what we're bringing into this elections. Many people, young, energetic, committed, but amongst them, the core of the new leadership that Singapore needs. That's critical for our future. All right, Minister, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, that's all the time we have tonight. We've heard from these potential candidates on the plans their parties have and their perspectives. You can catch this forum online at www.channelnewsasia.com slash GE Countdown. Now, as voters, we look forward to Domination Day when the parties finalize and submit the candidates who will contest the election in the different constituencies. Well, until then, the parties will continue to introduce candidates and possibly their manifestos. Thank you for joining us on this forum. Good night.